Hey everybody, I need to shoot a quick video to act as an intro to the videos that I've already done. Um, this video that you're about to watch, um, I recorded it and I recorded him thinking that it was cold reading when actually after I've uploaded the videos the next day, I woke up to find that somebody who follows our channel, uh, thank you very much, you know who you are, um, sent me some screenshots. And this is a person who had had readings with Thomas John for a while um, and totally believed in him. And turns out that they, well, over time, they've learned that um, he's actually not what they thought he was as you can see in these videos. So what we found out later, all well, I found out this morning is that just like Thomas does, Thomas John does later in his career, where, where I'm a little more familiar with him in 2019, 2020, when he's going to be doing a show, he posts on Facebook saying, Hey, everybody, anybody want a reading? <laughs> I'm going to be on this show. And so people will post and they will say, I'd like a reading. And he goes, great, call me at this number or call this number at this time. And what is happening is, is there's the Facebook post that the person has left. Like, so if uh, Mary Jones says, I'd like a reading, and he goes into Mary Jones Facebook page because there's the her Facebook page right there. Um, he says, yeah, you'd be great. So make sure you call in at this time and I'll give you a reading. And what happens is he's already got enough information to do a two or three minute reading. And trust me, it takes a minute or two to get the get enough information for somebody. I mean, it could take two or three minutes max to find a couple things that you need to, to uh, tell somebody. And they're not hard to find this information. So what I think is going on is that some of these readings are cold and some of the readings are start out as cold reading and then they move into information that he knows. And the reason why I feel like that's what's happening is because if, if Mary Smith calls in and all he sees on the screen or all he's told is Mary is here, then he starts out with a generic cold reading. You know, I'm getting an older family member, you know, it looks like a woman who wants to come through. Is, is this your mother or is this your grandmother? You know, standard medium stuff. And then whenever he's talking to her, her, he tries out some of the information on the Mary he's expecting to show up. And that's when it moves into a hot reading. So I think that's what's going on. Um, the host probably is totally unaware of all this. The person who's screening is probably completely unaware of this as well. So I think that uh, some of these readings are going to be cold and a few of them are going to be hot. Uh, let me show you a screenshot from the person who sent the um, information to me. And my team has spent the day trying to find more and we have some more. But just for time reasons, I'm just going to show you what I've got right here. And so... What Thomas John did is he's emailing the person. Um, the person emails him first, and then he says, well, would you like a reading on the show? And here's, here's the person right here. Hello, I'm interested in the recorded reading I saw on Facebook. Thank you. And then they give him the phone number, and then they call in, and they're able to, to get a reading. The person that sent me the screenshot did get a reading from Thomas John the next day on the same program that we're talking about. And um, she, the person told me that they was a little bit accurate and a little bit vague. And some of the predictions he made back in 2015 still haven't happened or 2016 still haven't happened. <laughs> so um, we have other people that were finding these, these screenshots where people who are saying, I want a reading, I want a reading, which makes it very easy for him to go in and, and find the information, him or one of his one of his um, confederates would be able to um, find that information for him.
So we'll we'll report back and probably in future videos as we find more information. But I just wanted to get this on the record because in the second video that I have in this series, I I quite honestly thought he was cold reading everybody. And so when he starts getting some hot readings or, or some really accurate information in this video, part two in this series, I said, good job, Thomas John. I don't know how you did that. Really good job. You know, you, you definitely scored some hits on that. Like I said, I wake up in the morning and I find out that these are hot readings mixed with cold readings. And so that person that I thought looked sounded legit and the reading sounded like he just got some really good hits now we know why so enjoy the rest of the videos if you do like this channel and you find this interesting doing a deep dive in mediumship and like me you find this fascinating especially the psychology of it please like please subscribe i would love to have your comments as well so enjoy the rest of the videos thanks Hi everybody, Susan Gerbic here from Psychic Explained, and I have another request from um, a person who, I'm not going to name who it is, but it was a woman who had told me that um, one of her first times she'd ever seen or heard of Thomas John was the video I'm about to show you. And this woman was in a kind of a vulnerable point in her life. And when she watched this video that I'm about to show you, she thought it sounded legit and everything was great. And so she started following the, the this medium, Thomas John. At this time, he's known as the Manhattan medium. And that's when I first heard of him. That's where he was. He was the Manhattan medium. This is far before he's a seatbelt psychic. And so it's back in 2016. He's appearing on a radio program. And the woman who suggested this video to us to look at, um, you know, she's she's now understands the tricks and, and the way mediumship works. So I want, you know, I wanted to look at this video that that it impressed her at the time. And I haven't watched it. So you and I are going to watch this together. I'm probably going to break this down into a bunch of different videos. I don't know. Let's see. I have no idea. Um, I've been following Thomas John since about 2017, I think, 2018, and I've never known him to do a good job with cold reading, and that's whenever you come into a reading cold. So when it's a radio show and people are calling in, and let's just for the moment say we think that these are real legit callers who have not been, um, are not friends of his or anything like that, so... I, let's just assume that. Let's go in with that assumption at the moment. And cold reading is done on the fly, you know, and it's 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 a real art form when it's done well. When it's done bad, ugh, it's <laughs> it can look really bad. But you know, if you're not experienced in this, and if you haven't been watching this and figuring it out and, and seeing the wordplay and so on over the years, then it's it it's probably gonna look pretty good. I don't know. I haven't watched this. I watched the first couple minutes of it to see, you know, because there's usually an intro and I don't want to show you all that intro. This is a young Thomas John. He's probably in his late 20s, maybe 28 or so. He looks great. He's got this really awesome suit on. It's uh, Mother's Day. Um, The intro that I'm not going to show you, it, it, I'll put the link in the in the show um the description under this video if you guys want to check it out yourselves and if you want to listen to it before i analyze it even more so because i'd really like to see what your guys's comments are uh, put them in the put them under the description um, put them in the comment section of the youtube channel i would love to see your comments um and by the way if you like this kind of video and these deep dives into um, explaining mediumship please subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Um, give me a like, you know, ring that darn bell, ding, so that you get notifications every time I put one up. So at the moment, there's, I think, six readings. They're all look like they're call-ins and um, they're named on the um, video. It has like a little, 
you know, from here to here is this person, from here to here is another person. This first one we're going to analyze is named Michelle. Um, like I said, I haven't listened to it. We're going to listen to it together. And I'm going to stop and at an appropriate time that I think we should stop and, and talk about whatever it is we hear. I'm assuming it's going to be cold reading because that's usually what happens with a, with a, with a call-in show. I don't know if that's going to be true, but I really doubt this is going to be hot reading. This is early in his career when he's the Manhattan medium. So 2016 Mother's Day, um, the show is called Above and Beyond with Laura Smith. And she apparently is, is a friend of his. Um, she starts off by um, asking, you know, wishing happy birth, happy birthday, uh, happy Mother's Day to his mom. She knows her personally. She says, I love her very much. And so um, they also start talking about, you know, what it's what motherhood and, and how important it is for um, us to, to honor our mothers and, you know, the mothers on the other side and, and things like that. And then Thomas John goes on and talks about like the upcoming events he has. So I, I don't think we're going to need to see a lot because this is a radio show. I'm going to show you the beginning and then I'm going to may not go to him completely every time that we're analyzing this because, um, well, let's just play it by ear. Okay. So let's look at the video. Okay, so I don't know what we're in store for any more than you know. So let's go and see what happens. For that. So without further ado, we've got to get to the phones. People waiting to connect with the other side on this beautiful, beautiful Mother's Day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll be right back with that. Don't go away. This is Above and Beyond with Laura Smith and Thomas John. Go to our Facebook page and Twitter, Above Beyond LS. Follow us there. Is there a Michelle then? It could be Michelle. Um, it could be. Yeah. Do you know if that's connected to your nephew? Um, yeah, it was one of his aunts from the other side of the family. Okay, so it's not somebody that you necessarily knew. Um, I want to tell you also, I, I, I feel like a sudden thing with this. Is this sort of like an abrupt thing? Were you not expecting this? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, and, you know, I want to tell you when he, when he goes over there, there is a woman that he's connected to who's really a powerful energy that I feel was actually more connected to your mom, to you, to you and your sister. And like, it feels like maybe he didn't know her, but I do see this kind of shorter, very strong, powerful woman. It feels like it might be more like his great grandmother, your grandmother, um, yeah. that is really connected to him. Now, I don't think this was with you. I definitely, because he's telling me this goes with somebody else, but who... Did, did, like, a friend of his get a tattoo? Yes. Yeah, because he's bringing up something about that tattoo. He also says, too, he's kind of like, he has a very funny spirit to me. Like, he's very kind of like, I want him to say, like, kind of sarcastic, kind of fun. He's funny to me. Yes. And he's telling yes. me that um, there, I feel many, many people at his funeral. He's telling me lots and yes. lots of people, like, the rooms were filled. And he does tell me, too, there was two ceremonies. So I don't know if you had, like, a something, and then, like, there was another thing a few days later or something, but he's talking about that. Um, is his room still set up? Yes. Yeah. Because his spirit is very much there. So is this your sister's kid? Okay, because I think that your sister must go in there sometimes, and oh, yeah. she does feel his energy in there. And there's also, a, I don't know if this is your dog or his dog, but there's a brown dog coming through, too. I'm not good with dog breeds, but there's a dog, there's a dog that comes through. Does, does your nephew have a sister? No. Okay, because I keep hearing sister, but maybe it's just the vibration because this is your sister's kid. Um, right. And does your sister have dreams about him? Does she, like, oh. feel like he comes in her dreams? Um, I think so. I don't know how recently that's happened, but it used to happen. Yeah. Right. Is there a car involved? Um, no. Okay, because I'm also seeing like a red sports car, so I don't know how that how that kind of connects. Could be something here in the physical world, but I feel like he feels like the family's really gathered together and stuff. So I feel like from that side, you know, he he feels like the family's really kind of like bonded together and stuff. He's very much around, though. I feel that he's very much around, and there's some sort of family wedding he's telling me he's going to be at. I don't know how this is connected, but there's like some sort of family wedding announcement that he's telling me he'll be at. 
But, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like he's a very strong energy. And probably if you can tell your sister about this, I think that would be really a positive thing. If maybe she could hear some of this, she might be able to fill in the blanks, too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling, Allison, and starting off the show tonight on Above and Beyond with Laura Smith and Thomas John. Hey, what do you guys think? Before I say anything more, make sure you write in your comments. I'm taking notes because this is one of the things a lot of people don't do is they don't take notes. And what they end up doing is they, especially if it's your reading, you remember the hits, forget the misses. That's very common. Also, they will say, he said this, when actually he didn't quite say that. Um, like they'll say, um, well, let me look at this thing. Well, there, there was several questions that he asked. Now, I, I don't know why it was cut off like that. I, that's the first time I've heard this this um, reading. Something about a Michelle. And she, he said something about it being Michelle. And she goes, well, it might be. So, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> Maybe the next one will make a little more sense. So there was something that was there that was cut off. So I don't know if they edited it out or somebody forgot to turn on the, the video camera whenever they went back from commercial or I don't know. But for some reason, they already knew that this was a nephew that had had um, passed on and something about somebody named Michelle. Um What do you guys think? Um, so I've got written down here a great great grandmother. That's really bad if you have to go back to a great great grandmother for your for your beginning. Most mediums will say I'm getting a mother like um, in it a person who's watching over you or a grandmother maybe energy or grandfather or father or father figure mother figure um, sometimes grandparent if if the person's young that they're reading. I've never, ever heard a great grandmother. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is really, that's, I mean, how many great grandmothers? And, oh, anyway, that's, this is a very young Thomas John who is probably done a lot of readings, but is not quite as smooth as he might be now. I'm, I'm really liking his tone. I, you know, I usually don't co comment on how people speak, but boy, He's much more smooth than he he becomes later in his his life. Sorry, I got the hiccups. He um his um his diction, you know, his way he speaks. This is very smooth, and it's a different kind of feel to it. And I, I actually like this much better. Not that he cares at all, but you know, we all change. This was 2016, as I said, so um, many years ago. All right. Did he have a friend that got a tattoo? That's not, I mean, that's a general statement. Tell us, Thomas, did, does he have a friend that got a tattoo? What's his friend's name? What does a tattoo look like? Nope. He's very funny. Well, of course, that's just something people say. Many people showed up at the funeral. And there were two ceremonies, but maybe there were two ceremonies, um, like you know he's like was there two things that happened okay so that it could be a formal funeral and it could be a wake or it could be a party of some sort or you know a life affirming thing or um it could have been the people who met at the funeral and then you know maybe some other kind of event some other people i mean it could be anything um she didn't confirm it at least not that i remember her saying um, he said, is his room still set up? He said it as a question. Big mistake. You be confident. If you're if you're doing readings, be confident. Say it um, and be bold with these statements. Don't say something, well, is it? You know, it is apparently, but you know, I don't know how long this guy's been gone, and and that could be very common. Um, is, is he your sister's kid? She said, yes, but we don't know how, uh, I thought that was already kind of there in the beginning. I'd have to go back and listen again. What do you guys think? seems like he's, that was already determined and it's a 50, 50 shot anyway. And there is some cutout, so we don't know what's cut out. 
I'm getting a brown dog. What about it? What's the dog's name, Thomas? How big is the dog? What is the breed of the dog? What is the relationship that he has with the dog? We don't know, right? We we just don't know because that's just a general statement. What who what child doesn't have or had a dog or access to a dog or something about a dog? I mean, that's and you know he uses that all the time because I've heard him say that many times where he'll say, I don't know, I don't know anything about dog breeds. And I see that even recently he'll say that. So it's kind of interesting. He's never learned his dog breeds or anything about dogs. I mean, maybe he says that because he doesn't want to be specific and he doesn't want to be wrong. So he he says, um, you know, that could be it. You know, he could say, I don't, he doesn't want to say it was a Dotson or a, a Russell Terrier or a Labrador Retriever or anything like that. Because if he knew his dog breeds, then he would be considered they would ask him you know what kind of dog it is maybe um but he always not always every time i've heard him talk about dogs he usually says i don't know anything about dogs i don't know anything about dog breeds he does have a dog i know he does have a dog his dog is always sick it seems like and um and i've heard him in videos where you know he's taking him out for a walk or whatever i i know he has a dog a little dog did he have a sister and the answer is no. Again, seems like that would be obvious. And then he plays it off like, oh, well, it might have been a, just a, a sisterly figure or because you're you're the sister of his mother. or uh, That's a miss. Does she have dreams about him? Oh, my gosh. What? <laughs> I mean, of course you have dreams about your son who's died. My goodness. And that's really reaching. Again, that's mediumship, like cold reading 101. I would not be surprised if he, he starts with the Cardinals, pennies from heaven, um, you know, music playing, um, a feather, a flower, um, any of those kinds of things. These are old memes that you just hear all the time. So um, I don't know. I don't know what to expect, but I, I would expect that. Okay. Was there a car involved? And that through me for a second because I thought what do you mean a car involved did he have a car we don't even know how old the guy was did, did he drive we don't know um apparently a car wasn't involved I assume he means by like an accident um he was hit by a car or he was in a car or something that had to do with a car and and if you have a young death a person who sounds like they're in their 20s or something like that yeah a car could possibly be a good way of of death for somebody at a young age like that i mean i mean there it could be an illness obviously it could be um it could be a lot of things but a car is a reasonable guess but no a car wasn't involved and then he said he saw a red race car he's just playing it off it doesn't mean anything involved um and a family wedding coming up that he's going to be attending he's well, they said they had a good size uh, family. The people are all coming together. There was a lot of people at his funeral. Yeah. And if you're a person in your high school years or whatever, and a young person dies unexpectedly and unexpectedly, uh, you would think that a lot of people would show up at the funeral. And if you have a good size family, the idea that somebody's going to be getting married soon and he's going to show up at the wedding is, yeah. So as far as hits, well, the Michelle thing, but we don't know where that came from. Something that's really, is it your sister's kid? Well, we're not still sure about that. I don't see any hits. I don't know if you guys saw anything. And then as usual, you guys out there who, who've um, watched me do these videos before, you know that one of the things I always ask is what is missing? And sometimes what is missing is is just as important as what is said and what is missing in this is well there's no names other than michelle um when he got a sister figure why didn't he just say the name of the person he thought he was getting you know might have been you know a sister-in-law or a very close family friend or a family member that was like a sister if he had said if he had just said the name then then the caller would have known who he was trying to get a hold of him you know what was going on um we missed uh, well we don't know 
we don't know his name. We don't know um, anybody's name, actually. We don't know how long he's been gone. We don't know how he died. We don't know, um, you know, what who's getting married. Why didn't you just say whose wedding he's going to be attending? The name of the dog and how that's related. Um, who was it who got the tattoo and what was the tattoo? Mm -mm. You know, the interesting about tattoos, that's a really popular one, is people will throw out, I'm seeing a tattoo with, and there's wings on it. And that seems very, very specific, right? But actually, it's one of the most common tattoos. And wings could be angel wings. You know, you get a tattoo in memory of somebody. So a lot of people will get wings, like a tattoo with, with like a, like an angel, um, or like Tinkerbell, um, yeah, birds of all kinds. Wings are one of the most common tattoos. Not the most common. I don't. I don't know if we know what is, but wings is a very standard thing that people throw out there. Mediums will throw out there too, because it sounds very specific, but it's actually very general. All right. So that was a cold reading. I'm going to end this, and then let's go look at the next one because I don't know what to expect on the next one either. So stay tuned. Let's see what happens here. I'm just going to interject really quick because as I was looking at the video that of the reading I just did and um, something struck me as I was listening to it and it was the part where he says, is the room still set up? You know, is this room still all together? You know, they haven't turned it into a, a guest room or something like that. Is it all still set up the way it was for him? And she said, yes. And then under his breath, almost Thomas John says, yeah, because he's still hanging out in there. That's he's still there. And I thought, wow, you know, how is this mother going to be able to move on? If you, and it, oh, and he said, and she goes in there sometimes. Well, yeah. <laughs> Why would she not go in there? Do you think she's going to? close the door and never go in and air it out or never vacuum in there or dust or move things around or pick things up and, you know, give things away. Of course she goes in there. I mean, we don't live in giant castles where you can close off a whole wing, like in Beauty and the Beast or something. <laughs> One of those shows where there's just endless rooms in the house. Um, you know, because we think about what's the harm in mediumship. And, and I want you to consider this that when you have mediumship done in this way where somebody like thomas john who who is um, throwing out some kind of flippant comment like that one of the things that happens is it doesn't your people aren't able to really grieve move through their grief and move on with their lives as they are is as, as awful it is missing that person i mean we, we just <sighs> People die and we have to get to a point where it's a part of life. Death is a part of life. And I think that whenever a medium does something like this, it makes it harder to move on. People tell me all the time, they ask, well, if they feel better, you know, isn't it okay? And it's like, it might feel like they feel better for the moment, but these kinds of statements don't allow the parent to really grieve and to move on, you know, go through the things and give away the, the clothing or give away the things that, um, that should be get, given away. And, um, you know, of course, hang on to some of the things, but life is for the living, right? And, Keeping a, a room completely like a museum devoted to this poor child, this child that's died, is horrible as it is. You know, and so after a period of time, you probably should go through your grieving process and, and um, you know, start cleaning it out, making the room completely different, changing it out repainting it, putting new carpet or whatever you have to do. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out because um, I th I thought it was a, a throwaway remark that he had said, but the more I thought about it, 
the more I think that that's kind of an, ex that's a good example of how mediumship actually kind of holds you in place and doesn't allow you to continue moving on. Because if this mother thinks that her son is still in that room, hanging in that room, if I was the mother and I believed that, that room would, would never ever be um, changed. And I would be probably living in that room myself thinking that I was there with him and um, you know, maybe it's okay for a while, but I'm not a grief counselor and neither is Thomas John. And I would suspect that it's probably better to start making changes in your life. And I don't think that was a healthy thing for him to say anyway. So let's move on to the next video. I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out that little thing there that uh, I thought was kind of important.